Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your people here tonight and we thank you for the Bible study. We thank you, Lord, for the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. Strengthen your people tonight in Jesus' name. As uh, our district uh, group pastor prayed and said, even though it is Bible study, that you still meet our needs. I pray tonight, meet every need in Jesus' name. And let the water of life flow into every life. And bless everyone abundantly. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see now we're coming to our study tonight and we're looking at John chapter 4. The gospel according to St. John and we're looking at uh, chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. It says, When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples, he led Judea and departed again into Galilee. That's the beginning of the verses we're looking at. We're looking at verses 1 to 10 of John chapter 4. And the topic tonight is the Savior's offer of glorious salvation. The Savior's offer of glorious salvation. You see, He offers us salvation full and free. He offers us salvation that helps us stay on earth and takes us to eternity. As we look at the what we're looking at today, it's a clear historical record of Christ's purposeful and powerful ministry. You're going to find as we look at verses 1 to 10 that here we see Jesus Christ giving us a clear understanding of his mission on earth of his commission on earth of his ministry of his life and what he came to do here on earth and he was focused he didn't allow anything to hinder him that's an example for you and for me that you should know why you are here on earth and you should be about that thing that brought you here to the world and you are not allowing anything to distract your attention anything to take you away from that as we look at the Lord Jesus Jesus Christ, many things could have come to hinder him. Number one, Satan came and tempted him, but Satan could not derail him or the progress he ought to make. And then for us, we need to think about that. What has God called you to as a Christian? What has God called you to as a minister? What has God called you to as a person existing here on earth? And then you say, sin will not hinder you self will not hinder you the society here will not hinder you and then circumstances that may come around you that will try to hinder you they will not hinder you in jesus name and then principalities and powers will not hinder you you have heard that you know in some places there are paths of darkness in some places there are kind of a secret spirit a walking about and they're destroying people's lives and destabilizing people's lives it will not get to you and if it comes you are going to overcome in Jesus name and you see Jesus Christ there was no inner drive and there was no external pressure that hindered him you see that's what hinders people they are, they are starting here and they go in that way and then there's an inner drive that will make them deviate and divert their direction other people is because of external pressure that it, that uh, kind of hinders them but Jesus Christ was fixed and Jesus Christ was focused he kept on what he ought to do at every stage he kept his mission and he kept his commission before him and he always did what the father has sent him to do look at something here as I read to you from verses 1 2 and 3 look at uh, verse 1 again when therefore Jesus knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, 
but his disciples he left Judea and departed again into Galilee look at that what happened here is that Jesus Christ had now started his ministry you remember what John had said he said he must increase and I must decrease and the fulfillment of that is coming on here because Jesus Christ now is more successful than John of course Jesus Christ is reaching out to more people than John of course and he's making disciples and is baptizing people more than John then the Pharisees they wanted to bring comparison and they wanted to bring a kind of a canal a competition between them and when Jesus saw that look at verse 3 he led Judea and tell me the next word there departed again into Galilee I want you to notice that very very important there are many people they do not know how to place that word in their lives they do not know when to leave a place and when to depart when your mission is being derailed and when your life is being a kind of turned upside down and when the purpose of your call you cannot fulfill and things are coming from here and from there and from there and they stay there and they do not understand look at the example of Jesus Christ he departed let me show you look at Matthew I'm looking at Matthew chapter 16 Matthew chapter 16 and I'm reading here from verse 1 and then I'll go to verse 4 look at chapter 16 verse 1 Matthew it says the Pharisees also when the Sadducees came tempting him and desired him that he will show them a sign from heaven look at verse 4 a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of Jonah of uh, the prophet Jonas and he led them tell me there and departed he left them and departed you see there are people they do not know when to move they do not know when to leave this place this place of hindrance and this place of disturbance and this place of deviation they do not know when to leave a particular place when their lives are not going on straightforward and when it appears that the calling of God in their lives is being distracted or destroyed or it's being defiled they do not know when to leave but Jesus Christ we're told here he left them and departed I'm looking at Mark chapter 6 in Mark chapter 6 I'm reading from verse 31 I'm reading from verse 32 Mark chapter 6 verse tell me verse 31 and, it say, and he said unto them come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while for there were many coming and going and they had no leisure so much as to eat you know what happened over here is that there's so much pressure and so many activities even to take their normal meals breakfast or lunch or supper there was no time to do that no time for quiet time no time for spirituality no time to think about life no time to think about where am I coming from what am I doing here where am I going no time to evaluate their lives and Jesus said it's time to come apart you must know in your life when activities bombard you and when activities pressurize you and when it appears you cannot even find your life and you don't you're forgotten where you are coming from you don't know where you are you don't know where you are going there's confusion you're at a crossroad and you don't know what you're going to do and there's no choice you're making your life and if you continue like that you will go to the uh, valley and you'll go from the mountain top from the highest point and then you go to the lowest point look at verse 30 uh, verse 32 and and they tell me the word they verse 32 and he departed into a in the desert place by sheep privately you can see the attitude of the Lord and you can see what he always did whenever it appeared that his mission here on earth was going to be derailed his mission here on earth was going to be confused he departed I'm coming to Luke or St. Matthew or St. Mark we're looking at Luke now Luke chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 42 Luke chapter 4 verse 42 are you there Luke chapter 4 verse 42 and when it was day tell me 
he departed and he went into a desert place and the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him and stopped him and pleaded with him that he should not depart from them look at verse 43 and he said unto them i must preach somebody there tell me i must preach somebody say that again he said i must preach the kingdom of god to other cities also for therefore am i sent he knew why he was here he said this is my mission this is my commission this is my life and this is my ministry this is why i came and then we're told in verse 44 and he preached in the synagogues of galilee we're coming to john look at john chapter 6 we're looking at John chapter 6 and I'm reading from verse 14. John chapter 6 and we're reading from verse 14. In John chapter 6 verse 14 it says, Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophet that shall come into the world. Look at verse 15. And when Jesus therefore perceived, that they will come and take him tell me take him tell me out loud whether you like it or not this is what we want of you whether you like it or not we're going to change your mission we're going to change your direction we're going to change your ministry we're going to change the purpose why the father sent you here to the world and so they said they, they, they had a conspiracy together and they bounded themselves together and they said we will force him look at that verse 15 again it says in verse 15 it says when jesus therefore perceived that they will come and take him tell me again by force to make him a king to make him a king somebody would say isn't that wonderful you know that sometimes they come from your village and they're pleading with you come and be the chief and come and be the chief and there are people that will not ask the question from the lord is this why i came to the world is this my mission on earth is this my commission on earth sometimes they come to tell them we're going to make you the chief or the king or the ub or the oba or whatever of this particular village this particular tribe and this particular community and there are people that will not check up from the lord and say i'm a christian i'm born again i'm a child of god god has called me to be a pastor god has called me to be a preacher god has called me to be a missionary god has called me to be a teacher of the word of god is this the calling for me they will just say well that's what my people want my people want me to be this my people want me to be that come back to verse 15 i'm reading that again well, Jesus therefore perceived that they will come and take him by force and make him the king. Tell me what he did. He departed again into a mountain himself alone. He departed. You can see that word now. Have you checked up that word in your life? There is sometimes during the day that you're in the midst of people and it is all, you know, noise making, laughter, jokes and everything and it's drying up your spiritual life and you do not know, you do not remember that word. He departed that, you know, I think I need to get out of this particular situation so that I can find some time to pray there are times in your life when it appears that the problems of your life are there the mountains are there no time to fast no time to pray no time to wait upon the lord and every time you want to you know do something and think about your life and think about your future they come and they say sir look at this ma look at this look at this and they're always coming always coming and you do not know when to check out you do not know when to take your leave and say i think that's enough at this point there are times when in our local church they're trying to create a you know situation between the pastor and another person there and they're making comparison and the, you know jealousy is coming in envy is coming in and then you are there and they're making you an object of jealousy an object of envy that you know they say uh, you know our district pastor is there and so and so is there our group pastor is there and so and so is there and you are now becoming the 
object of stumbling a stumbling block in the church because now instead of looking at Jesus it is you that is taking the kind of attention you should know when to withdraw quietly so that it is not through you envy will come envy will not come to the church through you jealousy will not come to the church through you and all the canal comparison that will destroy the church it will not come through you in Jesus name and so when Jesus heard that the Pharisees were murmuring they were saying ah uh ah -uh, Jesus he just started and John had been there for a long time and now this uh, Jesus is baptizing more disciples than John he quietly withdrew from there and he departed I pray God will give you wisdom but on, don't misunderstand me uh, you cannot depart from your family let's say for example now you are the wife and then uh, there is uh, one lady that came and he said say uh, okay I don't want trouble I depart is that what we are saying uh -uh, you will not depart from your family or maybe in your place of work that is your seat and that is your opportunity and then somebody is trying to make trouble and unseat you and get you away from your inheritance uh -uh, they will not drive you away what you have what God has given you you are going to retain in Jesus name what we are learning from Christ is that when there is anything that will bring envy unnecessarily jealousy unnecessarily or will sap your spiritual energy and derail you from the calling the Lord has given you God will give you wisdom to know how to depart at such a time in Jesus name and so as Jesus Christ was wise to depart whenever he needed to and then there was no compromise he devoted himself to what God had called him to do you also will have that wisdom your life will be fruitful your ministry will be fruitful and what God has appointed for you on earth you will fulfill in Jesus name as we look at this uh, study today the Savior's offer of glorious salvation there are three things to look at number one the commission and the ministry of the Savior the commission and the ministry of the Savior point number two the compulsion of must toward Samaria the compulsion of must that word must will put uh, in inverted commas in uh, toward Samaria point number three his conversation and his message for a sinner his conversation and his message for a sinner number one tell me number one there the commission and the ministry of the Savior. Look at it now from verse 1. This is from verse 1 to verse 3. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee. Look at verse 1. Uh, I'm reading this part that says uh, the, that the Jesus made and baptized more disciples. Jesus made and baptized more disciples. There are two things there. Number one, made. Number two, baptized. And then you see the one that comes first, made first and then baptized second. What does that mean? What it means is this, that Jesus Christ concentrated on making disciples, making disciples, making disciples. You see, preaching is good, but preaching can be superficial. Preaching is good and preaching can just be something we we'll throw out there that doesn't reach anybody, doesn't touch anybody, doesn't transform anybody, doesn't find the lost and doesn't save the soul and it's just a general knowledge general study and general preaching but Jesus Christ in his ministry he was direct he made disciples not only that he baptized those disciples but he had to make them disciples first before he baptized them that's very important those two things are important and those two aspects are ordered that is this one comes first baptism does not come first making them disciples came first look at that again it says jesus made and baptized more disciples than john let's look at the first part he made disciples first before baptizing them how did he do that and what did he do that tells us that he made them disciples number one there were sinners 
He converted them. They became sons of God. Number two, they were in darkness. He turned them around from darkness. He turned them into the light. And they were the old creatures, were the old man, old character, old habit, old behavior inside them. He touched their lives. He transformed their lives. They were saved. And then they became new creatures. If any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, tell me out loud. All things have become new And so they became disciples Let me show you how he did it We're looking at Mark chapter 1 Mark chapter 1 And I'm reading from verses 14 and 15 Mark chapter 1 We're reading from verses Tell me 14 and 15 look at this Mark chapter 1 verse 14 now after that John was put in prison Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom and saying the time is fulfilled the kingdom of God is at hand repent ye and believe the gospel that's what he preached it's not just you know the people that say they preach and the preaching is a kind of superfluous the preaching is is kind of a superficial the preaching is quiet on the surface there's no definite thing there's no definite thing they just say God is good yes we know that God is great yes we know that and God is wonderful yes we know that but you know what Jesus did to make a disciple and to turn people away from darkness and turn them to the light and to get them out of their sin and get them to salvation he said repent ye that's something definite repent ye and believe that the gospel and so he called them to repentance in fact that's what he said look at Luke chapter 5 Luke chapter 5 and we're reading from verse 32 Luke chapter 5 we're reading from verse 32 I'm waiting for you to open your Bible Luke chapter 5 and verse 32 it says I came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance I came to call, that is, in my preaching, I'm calling them to repentance. In my sharing, I'm calling them to repentance. In my witnessing, I'm calling them to repentance. He made them disciples. They were in darkness. And then he said, turn away from darkness and come to the light. He says, I came not to call the people who think they are alright. The people who think, well, I just I came to church. I don't need anything. I don't need salvation. I don't need repentance. I don't need, a, you know, a change of heart, a change of life. He said, I don't worry about those people. Those ones are hypocritical sinners but these ones that know they are sinners and they know they need a savior I came to call them to repentance we're looking at Matthew chapter 18 Matthew chapter 18 and I'm reading from verse 3 Matthew chapter 18 verse 3 it says and said verily very verily I say unto you except ye be converted and become as little children ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven you see Jesus knew that and he said it's not just calling people to be religious he wanted them to take a definite step and have a definite experience and they must know the day they must know the place they must know the hour when they actually repented and when they believed of the Lord Jesus Christ and they can say I was converted at such a day at such a date because that's what Jesus said Jesus said except you are converted that's his interest and that's what he wanted them to have and that's why he did that and that's how they became disciples before he could baptize them you see there are people today who will think that uh, you know we do water baptism to a uh, kind of appreciate the people to uh, make sure we give them a sense of belonging we baptize people so that they will know that we take them serious and then we bring them to our church so we can make them members of our church but no, you make them disciples first They repent first They are converted first Their lives are turned around first You see what Jesus did Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John Look at that verse 3 again Except ye be converted and become as little children Ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven Do you think Jesus will be interested in just having followers? 
just to eat the miracle bread and eat the miracle fish and not get to the kingdom of heaven no jesus will not be interested in that what he was interested in is that they will be converted and get into the kingdom of heaven look at chapter 6 of matthew matthew chapter 6 and i'm reading here from verse 24 matthew chapter 6 reading from verse 24 in verse 24 no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other ye cannot serve god and mammon what does that mean jesus said nobody can serve two masters you see there are people that they still they have one leg in one society and then they have another leg in a local church they are here they are there and jesus will not take those people as disciples because he himself said you cannot serve two masters what he meant by that is you look at who is controlling your life you look at who is the master of your life if money is controlling your life if men are controlling your life if women are controlling your life if a society is controlling your life if a particular master is controlling your life if a philosophy ideology is controlling your life if an association is controlling your life here is association, here is ideology, here is idolatry, here is an entity controlling your life, and here is Christ. And Christ says, I'm not interested in just saying that, you know, you are for me. You must totally declare, you must come out of that and come to Christ. And then I know that you are not trying to serve two masters because you cannot do that. If covetousness, if money is your master, and then you think I'm going to be your master, that's not possible because no man can serve two masters you come out of that under that authority and you come under the authority of christ and then i know you are converting your disciple only then would he baptize them you see we must make things very very clear so that you know people don't have you know an idol in their heart an idol in their home an idol of so uh, having authority over them and yet they say that i belong to the church no you cannot belong to light and darkness at the same time we're looking at luke Luke chapter 10 Luke chapter 10 I'm reading from verse 20 Luke chapter 10 verse 20 Luke chapter 10 verse 20 are, are you opening your Bible okay Luke chapter 10 verse 20 notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because tell me uh, tell me out loud your names are written in heaven those are the people he baptized those are the people he knew that these are disciples now heaven knows about them about their conversion the angels know about their conversion society knows about their conversion everybody around knows that this person is no more like us he's no more with us his name is written in heaven and jesus said it's not just because of healing it's not just because of casting out devils it is because your names are written in heaven that's why i rejoice look at verse 23 and he turned unto and he turned him unto his disciples those whose names are written in heaven and said privately blessed are your eyes which see the things which ye see and so we learn from the ministry of jesus christ that these are people that are real disciples we're coming to john chapter 8 john chapter 8 john chapter 8 and we're looking at verse 30 all through to verse 32 john chapter 8 verse 30 and as he spake these words many believed on him then said jesus to those jews which believed on him if ye continue in my word then are ye tell me my disciples indeed those are the people he baptized it's not the people that just came to a meeting and then when they came to the meeting i like the meeting i like your the name of your church and i like this and i like that but they have never made any commitment to christ they have not repented of their sins and they have not taken jesus christ as their savior and the only savior they have not abandoned all those societies of darkness and occultism they have not abandoned all those other masters that are 
ruling over them are just like your church. No, those people were not baptized by Christ. But the people that said, this is my Savior. And now I'm going to continue in the word of the Lord. Those were the people that were baptized and were willing to learn. Because it says in verse 32, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. The people who really want to be free, they desire to be free. And they come to Jesus Christ so that they can be totally free. Those are the people. Come back now to chapter 4 of John verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made, that's the first part, and baptized more disciples than John. This is the second part now. Baptized, baptized more than John. What's the baptism here? You understand? These are not infants. There's no infant baptism in the Bible. Infant baptism, you will not find it there. Because you have to be made a disciple. A disciple must have had the word of God, must have accepted the word of God, must have repented, must have believed, must have been converted, and the name must be written in heaven before you can uh, call him a disciple. An infant cannot do that. An infant cannot hear intelligently. An infant cannot act on that word intelligently. An infant cannot say, I've repented of, he doesn't know what sin is, and there's no repentance. And so the baptism is is not for infants number two the baptism is not by sprinkling water the baptism is not the missing a sign of the cross on the forehead that word baptism in the original it means baptism and it means to deep inside water and to immerse inside water and to submerge inside water completely and to bury that candidate inside water because you are burying the old life so that the new life will resurrect and come up look at john look at john John chapter 3 John chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 22 John chapter 3 verse 22 after these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea and there he tarried with them and tell me baptized look at 23 and John also was baptizing in Anon near to Salim because 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 there was much water there now if you want to sprinkle water you don't need much water there if you want to make water dip your hand in a glass of water and make a sign of the cross you don't need uh, much water but because you need to immerse them in water dip them inside the water that's why they needed the more water there that's why it says because there was much water there and they came and they were baptized they were baptized and now the lord has given us the commission that as we go we will do what he has done we're looking at uh, mark chapter 16 mark chapter 16 and we're reading from verse 15 and verse 16 it says in verse 15 and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature look at verse 16 he that believeth and tell me and is baptized shall be saved if you say you are believed here is what the lord has given as a commandment that once you believe you present yourself for water baptism and you cannot baptize yourself you cannot you know go to the riverside and say i baptize myself you are going for just a bath that one is not baptism somebody like a minister somebody that knows the word of god somebody who can testify to the fact that you have had the word of God You have repented of your sin You have believed of the Lord Jesus Christ Your name is rich in heaven Your character has changed Your life has changed That's the person that has the responsibility To take you to the river And then he will baptize you Because it says He that believeth and is baptized Shall be saved Look at the latter part of that verse 16 he, And he that But he that believeth not and but he that believeth not shall be damned. I want you to look at that verse very well. Look at that verse. The first part: He that believeth and is baptized, tell me, shall be saved. You see the word baptized there. But he that believeth not, any baptism here? No. 
whether he baptized or not if he does not believe if he has not been converted if you even take him to the riverside and dip him there that one has no meaning that one is not recorded in heaven that one there's no record of that he that believeth not shall be damned whether he's baptized or not he believeth not his life has not been changed that's why jesus made disciples number one number two he baptized them after they became disciples we're looking at matthew chapter 28 matthew chapter 28 i'm reading from verse 18 matthew chapter 28 verse 18 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth praise the lord that's my savior i said that's my savior the one that has power the one that can deliver the one that can set free the one that cannot lose any battle and you go to him he'll solve every problem of your life in jesus name it says that jesus came and spake unto them saying all power somebody say all power, all power. what are you afraid of all power. all power what darkness is in your community all power those things will never overcome you all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth then it says go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them look at that teach them first teach them about repentance then you baptize them teach them about believing of the lord jesus christ then you baptize teach them first how they will accept the lord and have the lord as their personal savior and as a change of life and then baptizing them how do you baptize them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost and after that if they're true disciples you see this now they will wait for teaching they will tarry for teaching they will continue for teaching that's why it says and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always i am with you always i am with you is he with you in the office if they try to throw something in your chair is he there with you is he with you in the night you see what you do in the day and when enemies when they try to persecute you dribble you here and there is the lion of the tribe of judah with you yeah. the one that has all power is he with you yeah. there is nothing to fear he'll protect your life and he says lo i am with you always even unto the end of the world and the people of god said yeah. amen that amen will be fulfilled in your life yeah. We come to point number two now The compulsion of most towards Samaria The compulsion of most towards Samaria We're coming to John chapter 4 And I'm reading from verse 4 John chapter 4 We're reading from verse 4 And he must needs go through Samaria Look at that language He must needs go through Samaria Look up here As we look at the life of Jesus his destination was known by the father his direction was known by the father his location was known to the father everything about his life was known to the father he was the messiah he was the master he was the man of galilee he was a man of purpose you see there are people that are purposeless there are people that are visionless there are people that do not know any direction at all in life if you ask them they wake up in the morning and you meet them in the morning and you say good morning brother good morning sister and you say good morning what's the most in your life today today i just wake up then i go where i went yesterday and then i'll come back home then i will eat then i will sleep what's the most in your life this week something that must be done that is part of the reason god sent you into the world they don't have any idea there is no must in their lives there is no must in their direction there's no must in their duty there's no must in their destination they just live from week to week and from month to month and from year to year and the years are running by and they do not understand this must be done 
one look at this again look at verse four he must needs go through samaria look at verse uh, five then commit to then he cometh to a city of samaria which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that jacob gave to his son uh, to his son joseph now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. He'd been walking and walking, he's been moving. He got to that well. Then there's a must. I must stay here. I must wait here. I must tarry here. Why? Because he knew why he came And he knew somebody was coming That needed his ministry That needed his mission That needed his grace That needed the water of life He didn't just you know go here go there It wasn't just roaming about There was a direction in his life And I'm pleading with you That if you have not been a man of purpose A man of direction That today you will think and say Am I like Christ? And do I have a purpose for living? And do I have the direction in which I ought to live? Here we are told, Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore being weary, Johnny sat thus at the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Even the time, we even told the time, the time of the day. That's the way you should think about your life. Any purpose? Any direction, anything you're doing at all, that's what I would say. The compulsion of most towards Samaria. Because that verse 4 says he must needs go through Samaria. Our Lord Jesus Christ was always conscious of the compelling most in his earthly life. He must, the most of life should always hold our attention. Here we are now, about one third of the year is running out. And about two thirds of the year lies straight ahead of us. What are the things God sent you here on earth to do? What were the things that this year must fulfill in what God has sent you on earth to do? You're a Christian. He sent you into the kingdom. And you're in the kingdom for such a time as this. What part of that ministry, of that mission, of that goal, of that purpose has been fulfilled in these four months of this new year? And then, what are you intending to do for the rest of this year? What's the most in your life? What's the priority of your life? What's the goal of your life? What's the purpose of your life? You nail it down like carpenters nail a particular wood to complete that chair or to complete uh, that furniture and they have to nail it down. They just don't put, uh, you know, the uh, slabs or whatever on each other without nailing something, pin it down in your life and say, here is the most your life will have meaning your life will have a goal you'll achieve something something good something purposeful and then you will look back and say praise the lord this year was not a wasted year your life will not be a wasted life come back to this john chapter 4 verse 4 and he must needs go through samaria that what most implies that you are compelled by the divine will that's the meaning of that word most you are compelled by necessity it's like you say i must eat breakfast i have to eat breakfast i ought to eat breakfast or i must do something i must do it i'm compelled by necessity i am compelled by duty i'm compelled by lifetime essentials lifetime essentials they are non-essentials that that one doesn't have a must if I have time, I can do it. If I don't have time, I, can, I will not do it. Because it doesn't contribute anything to my standing. It doesn't contribute anything to my stature. It doesn't contribute anything to my spirituality. I may or I may not. But there is something that is compulsory. That I must because I am compelled by lifetime essentials. You are compelled by eternal realities. You are compelled by divine appointment and by divine requirement. You are compelled by 
destiny and so jesus christ our savior he knew what he must do he knew what he must give he knew what he must get he knew who he must save he knew where he must go and i'm asking you that same question as a child of god do you know what you must do what you must know what you must have for example you must have salvation if you're going to get to heaven you must have salvation i come to the bible study and yes i know you come i come to the service i know you come when you come is there a must i've been i've been hearing this word of repentance i've been hearing days about salvation and yet if i am not saved and i die like that it will be a terrible sin for all eternity i must be saved i must know what it means to be saved and i must keep that salvation and i must give and i must say and i must whatever it is that is compulsory in my life think about that don't just come to bible study don't just read the bible let us know the most in your life and then you know where you must go for example, tonight, when we finish the Bible study, you must go home. It's a must. It's not like, okay, what's going to happen? You need to go back and sleep at home. And you need to go back and, you know, get back to the place where you came from. It's a must. It's a necessity. So, whatever the difficulties are, whatever the challenges are, whatever the people are doing, you know that for me, this is where I must go. You need to be thinking about that word must in your life and then you know that he this is who i must meet you know there's somebody you have to meet there's somebody you ought to meet because let's say for example you are not married now you have to meet you must meet your wife and you must meet your husband let's say you don't have a job now you must meet the job giver and you there is a must in your life if your life is going to be complete and thank god from tonight things will change all the aimless life and the purposeless life and there is no more in our lives everything is going to be cancelled tonight in jesus name and you take hold of your life and you think why am i here what am i doing what am i going to have and then that must comes in your life it will come your life is going to be wonderful then you, you'll be a man of purpose a woman of purpose you wake up in the morning you say yes this is my priority today this number a thing that must be done today you begin the week you say this the most of this week this must be done and you begin in new months you say this is the most that must be done this month and then in the new year this is the most this one must be done nothing else is going to take the place of this this may not be done that may not be done that may not be done but this one will be done and must be done in jesus name and then you begin to look about at your life you're, you're born again and then you're not growing you're not growing and then you say i must grow somebody there tell me somebody there shout it out if i must grow this is what i will have to do this one nothing will take this away from me i must somebody there tell me out loud tell yourself and nobody that you, you knew yesterday nobody that you knew last week nobody that came into your life and they, they don't have any purpose they don't have any goal they're just roaming about and then they meet you and they want to splash their aimless life on you and so my friend my friend <laughs> say please i need to do something i cannot continue another another minute here i must you must in jesus name we're looking we're looking at luke we're looking at luke i'm reading from chapter 4 and chapter and verse 42 uh, luke chapter 4 and we're looking at verse 42 I'm, I'm speaking to purposeful people tonight i said i'm speaking to achieving people tonight and i'm speaking to conquerors tonight in jesus name this is what makes a conqueror and thank god i see conquerors over there men and women tonight in jesus name Luke chapter 4 I'm looking at verse 42 and when it was day he departed and went into a desert place and the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him and uh, he that he should not depart from them that he should not depart from you see there are people that are 
dictate the direction of your life they want to dictate your destiny they want to dictate whatever it is you do or what you don't do but you are the one to tell them what you must do and not allow your life to be controlled and to be dribbled here and there look at verse 43 and he said unto them tell me out loud I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also for therefore am I saint therefore am I saint that's what I came to do and that's what I'm going to do you will do it we're looking at John chapter 9 John chapter 9 verses 4 and 5 John chapter 9 I'm waiting for you to read this one if you are ready say you are ready John chapter 9 verse 4 1 2 3 go Praise the Lord you see Jesus Christ is how we tell you. the people will not tell you they will not tell you you must work they will not tell you you must fulfill the will of God they will not tell you you must do what the Lord has sent you here or not to do it is you that will make up your mind it is you that will know I'm a woman of purpose I'm a man of purpose it is you that will know I'm a daughter of destiny and I'm a man of mastery it is you that will know here is why I came and this is what I will do rainy season will not hinder you dry season will not hinder you the noise of the community will not hinder you recession will not hinder you Pharisees will not hinder you Sadducees will not hinder you you just know that I'm sent here in the world I'm not going to be like the bird that flies uh, over the air in the sky and we cannot see their mark they don't make any mark but you you'll be a remarkable man a remarkable woman you will make a mark in your generation in Jesus name look at that chapter 9 verse 4 I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day the night cometh when no man can work how do you understand that take for example a student here here you are you have just uh, you know started a new session or maybe a new term or maybe a new semester and now you have uh, you know your timetable and you have all the books and everything uh, and then there are other students too that come and they say you know uh, let's have a nice time and they're just wasting time but you say i must work i must read i must study because the night cometh exam will come if i'm not prepared then after the exam whatever preparation i'm making at that time is a waste of time as time has gone has come and gone but this is the moment of preparation and this one i will master this one I said I will master this one and the same thing in your trade the same thing in your business the same thing in your life the same thing in your family there must be a must there must be something this family this is where we are going and we're going to get there I mean your family this is where you are going you are going to the mountain top and you are going to succeed and that must in your life nobody will cancel it in Jesus name there must be a determination inside you I must there must be a dedication inside you I must there must be a discipline inside you I must and there must be that devotion inside you I must and there must be that denial self-denial because you know if you don't have that self-denial even though you shout here in the Bible study I must when you get out there and all those other things uh, come the easy life the wasted life when they come you will not know what it is but you'll deny yourself you say this life this life will amount to something i'm happy with you i see success on your face you know and i see destiny on your faces in jesus name you will make it in jesus name because like Jesus Christ whom you are following like your master he says I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day the night cometh no man when no man can walk as long as I am in the world I am the light of the world you know you tell yourself as long as I am here I'm not going to be a refer. I'm going to be just a, not a journey just come I'm not just going to be somebody that is roaming about as long as I'm here I'm here for something somebody there I'm here for something you will do it in Jesus name and now let's come back to John chapter 4 John chapter 4 
and I'm reading here from verse 4 John chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 4 it says from verse 4 it says and he must needs go through Samaria then cometh he to, the, to a city of Samaria and, uh, and it says uh, which is which is called Sychar and then it goes on to say near the parcel of ground that uh, J Jacob gave to his son and it says now Jacob's world was there and Jesus therefore being weary in his journey sat thus on the well and it was about the sixth hour look at verse uh, 7 and there cometh what? a woman of Samaria to draw water and Jesus says unto her tell me give me to drink you know big things touch in small ways great things touch in little ways multitudes will come later start with this one you see there are people a little thing has come this one this is not what i'm looking for that's what you're looking for that's where your success will start i said that's where your success will start a woman of samaria came but let me show you the final thing a woman of samaria. we're looking at chapter 4 john chapter 4 john chapter 4 and i'm reading from uh, verse 14 so when the samaritans were come unto him the samaritans were come unto him something that started with just one woman something that started in a small way i'm telling you that nothing that started like a drop of water in your life is going to become a mighty ocean it says so when the samaritans were come unto him they besought him that he would tarry with them and he abode there two days and many many and many and many more believed because of his own word and said unto the woman this is some these are the samaritans now now we believe not because of thy sin but we have heard him ourselves and know that this indeed is the Christ the Savior tell me number one the Savior of the woman number two the Savior of Samaria number three the Savior of the nation and then finally the Savior of the world see what started in a small way that's why don't despise the day of small beginning start there start there because once you start there i'm telling you something great is coming your way we come to point number three now this is his conversation and his message for the sinner the one that came i'm reading from chapter four and we're looking at verse seven chapter four verse seven there cometh the woman of samaria to draw water and Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. And for the disciples, disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then uh, says the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman uh, of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And then verse 10, uh, Jesus answered and said unto her, her, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that says unto thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have given, have asked of him, and he would have given thee, tell me, he would have given thee, tell me out loud, living waters. You see here the conversation Jesus started with the woman, and this conversation was to lead the woman to have living waters. That is the water of life. Number one, Jesus started the conversation. He is the Savior because He is the one that takes the initiative. If the Lord waits for the sinner, the sinner will never come. The sinner is dead. The sinner is blind. The sinner is deaf. The sinner is carnal. The sinner is worldly. The sinner does not want eternal life. The sinner does not want a change. And therefore, it's the Savior that takes the initiative. And if we're going to get sinners saved, the people, many of the people will not come and take the initiative and say, I want, to, I want to repent from my sin. I want to turn away from my sin. But you, the soul winner, the child of God, is the one that will take the initiative 
initiative and what did Jesus say Jesus said give me to drink give me to drink and you know if uh, the Lord tells uh, somebody something as simple as that I'm looking at uh, Genesis chapter 24 Genesis chapter 24 and I'm reading from verse 43 Genesis chapter 24 and we're reading from verse verse 43 hey, look at this open your bible and see what uh, we learn from here here was the master servant of um, the chief servant of abraham is going to look for a wife for isaac and then he got to the well to the riverside to the well and look at what he says in verse 43 verse 43 behold i stand by the well of water and it shall come to pass that when the virgin cometh to draw water I say unto her give me I pray thee a little water of thy pitcher to drink you see that's how that started Isaac was the one to have the blessing of Abraham inherit the blessing of Abraham but he needed a wife and this uh, lady was uh, just coming to the well and she didn't know that this little request will open up her life to the inheritance that will be forever and ever and the same thing with this woman at the well she did not know she did not know who Jesus was and when Jesus said give me water to drink she didn't understand who Jesus was the same thing and when Eliezer told uh, you know this uh, lady uh, give me water and then she obliged immediately and that brought her to the blessing of Abraham the inheritance of Abraham tonight the Lord is asking you for something and that thing will lead you to life eternal that thing will lead you to uh, the thing in your life that you never thought of you never dreamt of in jesus name because jesus was on earth water was you know the medium of discussion but now it's gone to heaven and it's not asking you now for water because if you give water to him now how are you going to give him the water what's he asking for now we're looking at proverbs proverbs chapter 23 Proverbs chapter 23 Open your Bible Proverbs chapter 23 Verse 26 Can you read with me 1, 2, 3, go Okay, we have not all opened That's what I wanted to test Proverbs chapter 23 Verse, tell me 26 My son, give me thine heart my daughter give me thine heart my creature give me thine heart he made you he created you and he wants your heart and the reason he's asking you for that is because he wants to give you something he wants to give you the water of life he wants to give you something you don't possess at present and if you don't argue if you say it's asking me for my heart it's asking me for my love it's asking me for my affection it's asking me to love him with all my heart all my soul and all my mind and i'm going to do that something good will come your way in jesus name i'm coming back to john chapter 4 john chapter 4 and i'm reading here from verse 9 in verse 9 then says the woman of samaria unto him and how is it that thou being a jew askest drink of me which am a woman of samaria for the jews have no dealings with the samaritans you see he was looking she was looking at jesus as just a jewish man and because of that she brought uh, you know tribal uh, conflict into the discussion i said you're a jew and you're asking me for this ecclesiastes chapter 5 ecclesiastes chapter 5 i am reading from verse 2 ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 2 be not rash with thy mouth the Lord is talking to you hold on keep your peace and see the direction Jesus is going be not rash with your mouth and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God you see there are people that come to the service they are hearing the word of God and then they're jumping to a wrong conclusion and they're jumping to okay this is what they want of me that's why they're saying this that's why they say don't jump to any conclusion that's the mistake that woman was making if Jesus had not persisted that woman would have lost uh, the greatest treasure of her life and the treasure the Lord wants to give you today you will not miss in Jesus name be not rash with thy mouth 
and let not thy heart be hasty um, to utter anything before God for God is in heaven and thou upon earth therefore let thy words be few and let thy words be reasonable we're looking at verse 6 Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6 suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin when you come in the presence of God and the word of God is coming to you and it says give me your heart give me your love give me your affection and surrender your life unto me don't pass any comment that will make you to sin more it says suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin neither say thou before the angel it was an error there wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy hand it will not destroy the work of your hand we're coming back now to john chapter 4 and i'm reading from verse 10 in verse 10 it says and jesus answered and said unto her if thou knewest the gift of god tonight as you're sitting there standing there if you knew the gift of god and who it is that says unto thee give me to drink thou wouldest have asked of him and would have given thee living water your time has come it's going to give you that living water it's going to give you that satisfaction now the woman did not understand i hope you understand because you see when jesus said you should have asked he would have given you uh, the you know living water the woman said i said you're going to give me the living water with what are you going to draw the water let me show you what he meant when he said living water isaiah chapter 12 isaiah chapter 12 and i'm reading here from verse 3 isaiah chapter 12 and we're reading from verse 3 isaiah chapter 12 verse 3 therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation talking about salvation he's talking about salvation tonight there's salvation salvation is available you give your heart to him you give your life to him and it will give you this joy of salvation and this peace of salvation and this will of salvation he'll grant it to you in jesus name you know what he's talking about cleansing ezekiel this water we're looking at ezekiel ezekiel chapter 36 and i'm reading from verse 25 ezekiel chapter 36 and we're reading from verse verse 25 look at verse 25 it says then will i sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean tonight it will wash you this water of life will cleanse your life will wash your life i feel this will vanish away all your guilt will go away tonight in jesus name then will i speak of clean water upon you and ye shall be clean and from all your filthiness will i and from all your idols will i cleanse you you know what he's talking about for us believers now he says you still need to give me your heart because i want to give you living water what will that living water do for the believer i'm coming to ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 ephesians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 26 it says in verse 26 that he might sanctify and cleanse it or the washing of water by the word washing of water by the word you see he has salvation for us it's water he has cleansing for us it's water he has sanctification for us and it's water and he says that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing you know, but that it should be holy and without blemish all the blemish of your life it will take away he gives us salvation the living water he gives us cleansing the living water he gives us sanctification the living water i'm looking at isaiah chapter 44 isaiah chapter 44 and i'm reading from verse 3 all this coming from christ all this coming from christ that's why he's telling you give me something surrender something consecrate something lay something on the altar and see what will come see what will follow isaiah chapter 44 i'm reading from verse 3 
I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. That's talking about the pouring of the Holy Spirit. That's talking about uh, the baptism in the Holy Ghost. That's why it tells us in John chapter 7. John chapter 7 reading from verse 37 in the last day that great day of the feast Judah uh, Jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink he that believeth on me as the scripture has said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water you see this goes beyond what he told the woman because you see it not this is river this now rivers of living water the salvation is water the sanctification water is connected and then there's holy ghost baptism it says but they speak he of the spirit which they that believe on him shall receive for the holy ghost was not yet given because jesus was not yet glorified tonight it will fill you with the holy ghost it will fill you to overflowing there'll be a refreshing in your life tonight i said there'll be satisfaction in your life tonight isaiah isaiah chapter 49 i'm reading from verse 10 isaiah chapter 49 i'm reading from verse 10 are you there 49 isaiah verse 10 they shall hunger and they shall not hunger nor thirst neither shall the heat nor sun smite them for he that has mercy on them shall lead them even to the spring of water shall he guide them that's satisfaction that's refreshing that's revival it is coming upon you today uh, you know sometimes when you look at vegetation you look at the grass it has been dry there's been no rain and then it's been sunny and the heat has uh, you know beating upon them uh, and the dust all there and you see it's like the grass is like all the it's like they are morning they are morning all of a sudden you have showers of rain showers of rain and then go after that after the showers of rain everything is refreshed sometimes you look at believers they are dry they're weary they're tired and it's like you know what is this i'm saved but i don't know what's happening i'm sanctified i don't know what is happening i'm even baptized in the holy ghost but you know i'm tired and weary all of a sudden water of revival will come upon you and the water of refreshing will come upon you satisfaction and joy and excitement and they will see you the brightness of the morning day will come in your life in jesus name revelation revelation chapter 17 uh, sorry chapter 22 revelation chapter 22 and i'm reading from verse 17 revelation chapter 22 and we're reading from verse 17 look at this it says and the spirit and the bright say come the spirit and the bright say come let him that's a thirst come and let him that let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will anybody there today whosoever will i said any whosoever there today whosoever will let him come and take the water of life how freely is coming your way you are blessed tonight you are refreshed tonight you are revived tonight and this water of life will refresh your life and feel satisfy your life tonight in jesus name in revelation chapter 21 verse 6 revelation chapter 21 verse 6 and he said unto me it is done on your behalf it is done your blessing it is done your desire it is done i am alpha and omega the beginning and the end and i will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely he that overcometh shall inherit he that overcometh shall inherit all things and i will be his god and he shall be my son look at all the promises we have today refreshing is here revival is here restoration is here salvation is here sanctification is here holy ghost immersion baptism empowerment is here everlasting life is here and all he says is 
give me water and I will give you the water of life. Give me your heart and I'll give you my inheritance. Let's rise up and tell the Lord, I will not go empty handed tonight. I'll not go empty handed tonight because the Lord is inviting you. The Lord is inviting me and the Lord is saying, why don't you come? Why don't you come and give your heart to the Lord and the Lord will bless you tonight. Hurry up, hurry up, get up and, and open your mouth and talk to the Lord. You will not go empty handed. Think about all that you have had today. Think about what you have had. If there's any conflict, any comparison, any jealousy or something there, if there's something at a crossroad, you know when to depart. You say, Lord, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. I don't want to just stay there when I shouldn't be staying there. And then you know there must be a must in your life. A must in your life. And you know that life will become meaningful when you can say, here is why I came into the kingdom. Here is why I came into the world. And then my direction, there's a must, my destination, there's a must and my destiny, there is a must and then the water of life is available for you. Call upon the Lord, he will answer your prayer tonight.